Okay, I'm looking at a 2016 to 2018 Ford Expedition. Uh, we've obviously got the larger touchscreen interface. It came with Sync 3 version 1, which did not have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. We took it into the dealership to see if we could get it upgraded because I was trying the USB process using the software from online and stuff. You can upgrade it yourself very easily by simply um, putting a... A thumb drive into there with the correct software on it um and allegedly it was supposed to was supposed to work but i could tell that um at one point someone had tried and maybe wasn't patient enough and pulled out the thumb drive or something and because it just it just kept saying bad file i tr i bought a brand new thumb drive to try it that way formatted it the correct way like everybody says to i think it's uh x fat 32 or something like that um, needs to be a certain speed, needs to be a certain size. I did all that stuff. None of it worked. So I took it into the dealership. They hooked up to the OBD2 reader. They, I think they even uh, jacked into the thing directly, into the stereo directly. And um, in trying to run the update, tried to push it, it broke the APIM, the APIM. Um, and that is the module that runs Sync 3. So when that happened, my screen went black uh, because the rear air was off at the time, uh, now we couldn't turn it on. So our, our, our rear passengers were getting really hot. And this unit, the APIM replacement was going to be $1,500. Uh, I was able to negotiate them down to, you know, a little over 1200, but I decided instead to just do it myself when I looked on eBay and saw that I could get, the APIM for about, um, and the USB that I needed to change for about $400. So if you can do the update yourself using just the correct, um, the correct USB drive, then it's you, the only thing you're going to have to sp spend money on is this new USB module. Cause to upgrade to Apple CarPlay and Android auto, this module needs to be replaced. Again, I should not have needed to upgrade my APIM. That should have been fine by just by just loading the new software on it. But because it broke, I needed to replace that as well as the USB ports. So that's what I did. I bought them from the same guy uh, on eBay. It was around $400. The unit itself was used, but he has a one-year guarantee on it that It'll or one year warranty and it guarantees it'll work, have the latest software, all this stuff. I didn't care if it was used, my vehicle's used. So uh so that didn't that didn't bother me at all. As long as it works, it should stay working. So I happened to find mine, this new one on eBay. Uh I sent them my VIN number and they uploaded all the right stuff, allegedly. So we're about to see um if that all takes place like it should. The first thing, um, when this is all still attached and on there, it you know it sits right here. And then this is just on the very bottom down here. It sits in there just like that, real tipped, real slanted in there, hiding two screws under there. So you can see the kind of clips that we're dealing with here. They're kind of hard to get out. They pull straight out and I used, I think it's called a spudgeon tool. Uh, I use something like that. You could use anything that's plasticky uh, that won't that won't wreck the finish on this. I I probably wouldn't use a metal screwdriver, but it's your vehicle. You get to decide. Once you get under there, then there's two. There were two screws. Uh, they were here and here, and I took those out, and then that exposed this whole thing. There were four screw or i'm sorry once you took those two screws out then there were six screws one two three four five six then this is going to slide out just like that then this is going to pull out just like that and on the back is that uh, module that we're talking about and i'll show you how we're going to change that okay so we got this thing turned around now um yeah, three things we're going to remove right now. We're going to take this off by simply pulling this this gray portion forward, and it's going to unlock that. Uh, this portion here we're going to remove. You can kind of see how that's going to come out. That, um, that little black tab needs to get pressed. And then same with this blue one down here. We're going to be pushing that blue tab to re release those. You're going to leave these last two, this one and this one, you're going to leave in place. 
until we um, until we get inside when we're going to undo these screws and um, and just switch out the module and then we'll put these back. It, this module connects to the screen through that little cord. That's what's happening. All right, so we've got it out of the vehicle now. And uh, this last one, this little blue one right here, it wasn't clear if you had to push the tab out or in because it wasn't coming very easily. It wasn't coming out of there very easily. It is a it is a squeeze and it just pulls a little harder than you think. Be careful, you know, because of course you're dealing with um, circuit boards and things like that, but it did, it did pull off. Now I'm already noticing we have a little bit of a problem here. Um, we're missing this piece that was on my old one, but there was nothing in there. So I think we're going to be okay. I'm guessing the guy checked the VIN number and we should be all right. Uh, I noticed that this one is a one, two, and the one that came out of my vehicle is a three. So we're about to find out if that really matters also. But all I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna take off three screws. It's gonna be this one, this one, and this one. I'll do that after I remove this, this blue one here. Okay, I am noticing um, on this part here, let's see if I can zoom in there, not very well. But on that part there, when we when we depress that, it looks like it catches down a little further. So you're gonna need a small screwdriver to put in there to really release that. And then that should slide up. And if I can, I'm gonna to try to leave the yellow one on because that part needs to stay connected to the screen anyhow. I really only wanna remove the blue one. The one that came out of the vehicle had this pad kind of placed in here to protect it from, from banging up against the back of the screen a bunch. And um, I'm just, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and mount it there with just some 3M mounting tape. Okay, so I was able to get the old module, I got the blue to release from the old module without needing to take this piece off, um, just as I was describing it to you. And I also was able to remount the pads. It doesn't fit quite as, well as I probably would like um, with that pad, but that should squish down just fine once I start running the screws into it. So we'll just put those three screws back in and then we'll go reinstall this, see if it works. All right, I don't have the vehicle powered on or anything, but the minute I plugged in that large black cord with the gray arm that swings, uh, everything powered up. Uh, it said USB device is not supported, which is that guy right there. Of course, that means it's time to change that out. Okay, the way Ford put that in there, it's a little bit of a pain in the neck. It has um, a tab on the top and the bottom. So I was able to get it loose with the plastics spudgeon. But then uh, I ended up switching because I couldn't get a good angle on it and nothing was rigid enough. I was worried about breaking a plastic sponge and that's meant for laptops and such. So I switched to just a paint pry can. That was perfect, it popped right out with no issues. Now all I have to do is uh, unhook these two cords here and uh, plug in the new ones and I should be in business. All right, installing them lit up the screen again. The screen did go black right when I started prying all this out and installing those plugs on the back. Simple squeeze plugs, both of them. So once those are in, you can just slip that back in there and push. We should be in golden shape. Let's find out. I'll switch this guy over. Oops, it's upside down. Let's try that. Here we go.
the all right you already know that the fan on this thing's loud because you own one but uh looks like everything's working i'm just turning it up and down over there with the knob of course that's what's happening nothing nothing's going wrong with this this one uh came pre-programmed with nav already on it which is great so far everything else over here works though rear ac we're gonna turn on I can hear it kicking in back there. We're in golden shape again. Our rear air was off when the thing went out, and so we had zero air conditioning. We live in Arizona, which is why I did the whole transfer of the module inside just to get out of the heat. All right, perfect. All right, we're in good shape. I've got the cord plugged in, uh, connected to the iPhone, and uh, everything's working. You can select CarPlay stuff, whatever it is that you're looking for. You get both views, which is great. The the missing port on the back had zero effect on it. Uh, the guy in eBay knew which one I would need, and, and everything worked perfect, so that was a non-issue. And uh, yeah, everything is everything's here. Everything's working great. All right, we're almost there. We're just going to put that unit back on. Uh, again, these are the six screws, one, two, three, four, five, six. You want to start with the top, leave them loose, then put this unit back over it. You can kind of see how it overlaps like that. You'll want to uh, put that back over it, slip it on. One, two, three, four. Make sure this is lined up straight. Also, this one for me, the little um, clip that uh, kind of acts as the nut slipped and so it felt like there was no nothing to screw into all i had to do is reach back in there straighten it and then put that back in Seat covers and more. Get the right, the right Apple CarPlay, Android Auto installed.